and yes, yes. that's good enough. So, okay, oh, go. that's me. Hi, you see me in two places, and people in the recording see me in one place. So, hello everyone, and welcome to the uh, uh, group session about design patterns. So, here in the class, we have a assorted group of students, right? So, uh, as I can see, we have quite a bit of freshmen and sophomores. So all the people who were promised points to come here. Is there anyone who is here and was not promised points to come here? Okay, okay, I see. Well, that's what the promising points for, for attendance uh, does to people. Uh, well, we hope that you come for free food and points and stay to, to, to learn something. So my first question to you. Um, what's design in general? Not even object-oriented design or whatever design. Design in general. Sure. Uh, is it only about looking? More opinions? Uh, sure, Tirek. Right. right, so figuring out the process, the looks, something else? Um, sure. What's your name? Hmm? Yeah. You can already know that, right? How, how to be comfortable with what? Right, so uh, convenience, great. So, uh, looks, uh, what was your CDEC? Process, uh, comfort, uh, convenience of, uh, of what? Of what? Of using a what? Some product, right? So you have some product and you want to figure all of those stuff anymore. One of the stuff that was not named was, I mean, okay, let's give Isaiah a chance. What's another thing? Oh, so much pressure. Uh, we should uh, look on our goals, for example, something we're building and we want to scale it in the future. We should be prepared for the scaling or something like this. Right, so we should also think about structure. How our product is structured. So for instance, uh, in case of uh, a phone, right? Mobile phone. We need to obviously think how it looks. Nobody buys ugly phones. You can have the best phone in the distance if it looks ugly. People will not buy it. But aside from looks, we also should think about what's inside it, how those things are organized, and what was about convenience, right? So how convenient this yeah it is to use uh, the phone. Uh, so in case of software, it's the same, right? So when we do software design. We are thinking about how uh, nice the program looks, how convenient it is to use it, all the uh, um, all the things we can do, uh, it can do, right? That our user might want. But also, just like with uh, phones, so phone can be very nice and very nice to use and do a lot of things. But if it's uh, very expensive to produce. So, for instance, my one of my favorite phones ever designed was uh, Xiaomi Mi Mix Alpha that had a 360 screen, you know, so the entirety of the phone from all the sides was a screen. They designed it. They never produced uh, more than one uh, prototype. Why? Yeah, so they designed a really cool phone, right, that, that had all the new features. It was uh, Convenient to use, people like it, they never produce more than one uh, prototype. Why? Durability hmm? Durability. Uh, is that solvable? Production cost. Production cost, that's it. Thank you, Eddie. So, uh, if our product is difficult to uh, create, produce, and maintain, no matter how good is it, we, uh, uh, at some point we will reach a barrier where the cost uh, not allow us to move for further. So that's why one of the main objectives of any design is to figure out how to how to make the home, uh, the product maintainable and uh, easy to develop. So if you are doing software design, what do we understand by maintainable product? Uh, sure. Something that should keep working for them to be not just give some. For the database or some service to define, we should think about how they will uh, keep it like working. Right? Exactly, right? So, what if we develop a really cool video game? 
And then uh, our users are like, well, we, uh, we, play, we play so much, we want, we want new content. So you should think not only how to develop in the game, but how to potentially add new stuff to it. Microsoft released the board in 95. So first version of Microsoft Office was released in 95. Now we have Microsoft Office 23. Right, so uh, how, how, how did they develop that? Well, they, they were, in, in the very beginning, back in 95, obviously many things have changed in them. But they still were thinking, what if you want to add new features? How does it work? And that's why we taught OP all to you, right? Because we're like, oh, uh, object-oriented pro programming allows for easier, um, for easier design, maintainability, uh, the, for uh, easier development, and so on. So now we are taking it one step further, right? Because, uh, so first, when OP was invented back in uh, it was invented a long time ago when it was popularized in the 90s. Um, there, there were started to arise some common problems. So when people were like, okay, I want to develop an object-oriented program, uh, pro object program, but I cannot figure out certain issues. And those certain issues, uh, uh, at some point, they were so common that four guys, uh, and nobody remembers their names, you can Google their names, but nobody knows their names because we know them by their, uh, by the name of their group. They were called Gang of Four. So, uh, uh, or GOF for short. So that's for like four software architects who joined forces to write the books. It was called Design Patterns. So again, in not, uh, not in terms of software, in general, what's a design pattern? Right, so often you, you meet the same requirements, right? So, a people, uh, so for instance in web design, a people come to you and say, I am an uh, entrepreneur, I am uh, selling, I don't know, author flashes on Amazon. Or, or Wildberries, or, or, or on AliExpress, doesn't matter. I want my own website. How do you think, how many people have a similar problem comes to web designers every day? A lot, right? Probably hundreds. So obviously, if you figure out that, if you figure out the um, uh, pattern for one of them, you can use that pattern for uh, many, 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 uh, is there something? Okay? Uh, oh. Well, let's hope that the main recorder is safe because I'm not I'm not recording the Okay, now we are testing who, who didn't use the as a laptop. Now everyone has. So if you develop everyone now. Now? <laughs> now? Now? Where is the timing from here? Maybe, maybe, by the way. Uh, let's do this then. Here we go. Now it should be good. So, if you develop one design for all the similar websites, where some entrepreneur comes to you and says, uh, I sell this one thing, I bought a website, you save a lot of that. So, that's some kind of design pattern that you might develop for web, web design. The same with software. So, they said, like, look, oh, this cool thing, you can apply in many situations that will make your life easier. And this time that becomes super popular, and now if you go to an average software interview, software engineer interview, they will be like, okay, name me five design patterns from Gangle 4 book. And you're like, what? So we are hoping with uh, this set of, uh, uh, set of sessions, right, that I, uh, so for, for freshmen it could be the set, but I think everyone else will also be welcome to, to other, uh, to the second and the third. And so, at least for now, there's going to be a set of uh, sessions like that. To introduce you to design patterns, so you hopefully rec uh, recognize how useful they are, and learn uh, how uh, and uh, uh, where to use them. And second, uh, so you be uh, it's easier for you to develop a more maintainable software. And the second goal, well, if you go to 
software engineer interviews this summer for an internship, that would be a positive analysis. So kill it to be with one story. So let's look at the first example. So and I do have first example here. Uh, here is the first example. So again, so there are many design patterns. Actually, if I'm not uh, if I'm not mistaken, there are 26 of them. Today we are not going to be discussing 26 of them. Today we'll start with three as an idea, right? And then and then we'll see how it goes, right? Mm -hmm. So design patterns are created to solve certain type of problem. So this is a program with a certain type of problem, and your first task is to recognize what's the problem with this program, right? So let's discuss it. We have some kind of some uh, so and obviously I'm not talking about obvious things like length variable is never used or like uh, whatever. Uh, so I'm talking about design problems. Obviously, that's only like a demo. So some pro some things will not be used. They are just to make it feel more like a natural code, right? So we have some program that is uh, helping to organize conveyors and machinery on some kind of factory. Right, so imagine there is a factory that produces what? What our factory produces? Pants. Pants? Pants for you, so you never, uh, you always forget your pants. Ah, pants, okay, sure. We have some pants and pencils factory, let's say. Right, that produces pants and pencils, great. So what does it have? So it has conveyor belts and it has machines. Right, and we have some. Um, some uh, qualities of the conveyor belt, and obviously we have source and destination, right? So from which machine to which uh, to which machine the, the container goes, right? And here is the typical constructor, typical setters, right? So uh, nothing, nothing of this should should be should be um, uh, new for you, right? And the same with machine. So it has some characteristics. And it has a vector of inputs and one output, right? So many things can enter one machine and it will produce one thing. So for instance, you can say that one input is wood, another input is, uh, what do you call it, uh, graphite. And what is the output? Pencils. Here you go. Right, and again, typical constructor, typical uh, inputs and outputs. Right, and then we have machine control system. So that thing, it knows all the machines on the factory, and it knows all the uh, belts on the factory. And what it does, um, wait, what did I? Uh, what? Give me a sec. That was not, hmm. let's see. Ah, no, it's fine. So uh, don't worry about this. So uh, it, it knows all machines, it knows all belts, and well, it has some, uh, and it knows how many products, meaning pencils we have in storage, right, for instance. And so let's see if, of an example. So that's a system that knows about all machines, all conveyor belts. And what we try to figure out is to how to convert, uh, how to, um, how to connect one machine to others right through conveyor belts. Uh, so, for instance, again, one, one thing produces pens. Uh, so, for instance, one thing takes raw wood, it produces pen cases and uh, pencil cases. And those pencil cases go to the second machine and so on and so on. So, we have one class that uh, figures uh, all of that out. It figures out how all conveyors connected to all machines. Right? So, here is an example, for instance. Right, so we have a first machine with some characteristic, a conveyor belt. Uh, so the first machine is putting uh, its output to the conveyor belt, right? And the belt taking the um, input from the machine, right? And then we have second machine that also have some characteristics, second conveyor belt. Well, and the second machine has the second belt as uh, the output. And first belt as the input, right? So we have um, whatever, some, some kind of thing, right? And so on and so on. So we have many, many, many different machines that produce uh, many different products that go one into each other, so on and so on. If you guys played Factorio, you should recognize this. Anyway, 
so all all good um and so yeah so we can see that we have uh, uh we create all machine control system we create some other classes right that are related to our thing so on and so on right so we have all our factory in these classes and then we start our control system right so see it as a snapshot right as some small part of a real real problem right so for instance you don't know what's logic area you don't know what's on logic area it's not important Right, we have many, many different components of our program, and the one that has the problem with it is this one, machine control system. So uh, let me show it to you again. So like this, here you go. So this component has two problems with it. Ideas what those two problems might be. No, you're, you're banned from answering. What's the problem with, with, that, with that file? Great. So first of all, all this connection to each other is really messy, right? So you need to remember which belt goes into which, uh, into which machine, which machine uh, is connected to what belt. That's, uh, that's really messy. That's true. What's the second problem, though? This, this is, by the way, an example of a bad uh, class design, right? Because the idea is that you need to add many things to, to each other, and if you uh, do one but forget another, uh, it all breaks. It's called having uh, that the classes have very high coupling. What's coupling in object-oriented design? Well, coupling, it means when classes depend on each other a lot, and you need to manually figure out those dependencies. So here you need to manually add uh, one machine to another and one conveyor belt to another. Uh, it, it, it's quite messy. That's one problem. Well, what's the second problem? All right. So we have this one super important uh, machine control system that has all machines in the, yes. Uh, maybe problem with scalability. Uh, that if you want like 100 machines, yeah. or if it's related to the first issue. Yeah, so if you want 100 machines, it's going to be a lot of code. So how to solve this, Atai? Uh, maybe make it all like, uh, how to say, it? Uh, yeah, like reusable. What, what do you mean reusable? Uh, if you want to create, to create one machine and one conveyor bolt, you can maybe structurize it, uh, kind of to make it. Uh, yes, to, to, uh, to make a template, that's all good and all, but again, at some point, someone needs to input all that information to the program, right? So at some point, if you have 100 machines, you need to somehow uh, describe how all of them connected to each other, right? So how to do that? Sophomores? Hmm? Graphs. You can use graphs. To, to imagine your uh, your um, uh, machines as some kind of a matrix, and there you see what connected to what on that matrix. That, that is the solution. Uh, so if you don't know what to do with graphs, you can imagine that there there is going to be some design produced in like Photoshop, and your program will accept that design and based on that create all those connections automatically. So for simplicity, let's say that. But what about the second problem with this, with the entire program? Maybe let's see at uh, that logic area thing that I have here. So logic area is the, the thing where they, they bring new, new materials, right? So it also have machine control system, right? And when it accepts new product, it adds it to the storage of uh, control system. So now I'm telling you, the, the problem with this program is on the screen right now. Who will notice? Mm -hmm. Come again? Uh, no, I mean, that's the idea, right? So that's the main controller of the entire processes of the factory. So, you, okay, let's say you can, uh, in pairs, find the problem, you have uh, 60 seconds. Come on, discuss it. In pairs or in groups of three, whatever.
A second, give other people a chance. Okay, so I, I heard that Tan has an idea. Someone else? Uh, I mean, Jomat, you, you, okay. Chilek, let, let's go with you. And, like, again, that's, that's because it's not a full program. It's only one, one part of it. Is it yet? Exactly. So, so the, 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 the thing is that, look, here in main, we create a object of machine control system. And here in the constructor of loading area, we create a second one. So this machine control system and this machine control system are two different machine control systems. And how do you think one factory, how many control systems it should have? One, because it has all the, fa all the machines and all the singletons. So it's a very common, actually, problem that you have two objects that don't relate to each other, and then you don't understand why changes to one don't, uh, one changes in one place don't uh, happen in the second. Right? So the problem here is that we actually have two machine control systems, right? So how can we solve it? Well, of course, we can uh, do this, right? We can, uh, we can give it in here, accept it in here, right? Uh, and write something like this. But it should be a reference then, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it should be a, a reference, uh, good, um, a good call, something like this, right? We can do this. But what if we also had the same in a loading area? What if we had the same in whatever? In, uh, in some other, maybe some workers has reference to uh, machine control system. So we can give that machine control system to, to, to all of them, but that would be so many passing that all around. And even if we do that, there is still a possibility so some stupid interns, which are not us, we are all perfect software engineers who never make, make mistakes, but our you know, our uh, management, they are very dumb. And they hired the dumb intern that accidentally created second machine control system. And because of that, uh, the program stopped working. So that is the problem. So we have some class of which we should always have exactly one object. Uh, another example of this, imagine we are creating a weather prediction, a forecasting cap. And we have class sun. How many suns we have on Earth? What if we create a second sun? Well, it, it will make no sense. So, uh, e uh, so in video games, it's also very, very often. So, for instance, in your soccer band project, right? I'm now talking to all these students. You have those levels, right, that you need to switch between. So, for instance, one, one, some people are coming to my office and I was telling them that the good thing would be to create a level manager class that manages switching from one level to each other. How do you think, how many of those level managers should exist in your code? One. Exactly one. So the problem is we have some project that should always be in only one copy, and we have some dumb interns that can accidentally create many of them. What's the solution? Well, the solution is a pattern, design pattern that's called singleton. Or, as people who uh, don't speak uh, English language natively and just read how it's written, singleton. Uh, singleton, and that's exactly how we'll uh, address it. I will be deep in my grave before I uh, uh, acknowledge that it's singleton. Uh, so let's see how singleton works. So this is the same code, but now with the pattern implemented. So conveyor belt machines, they look exactly the same. The only change is in machine control system. We have this. So what's this? It's an instance. Right, so why it's called instance? 
It's a pointer to a what? To, it's a pointer to an object of, this, of the class in which we are currently in. So it is a pointer to the machine control system. If we were in a class sun in that weather forecasting scenario, it would be a pointer to class sun, right? So, and it's static. Who will remind me what static is? Static is basically just a single one. Right. So it means that that, uh, that that variable, it doesn't belong to objects, right? Uh, to uh, separate objects, it belongs to the entire class itself. So there is always only one of them, right? So, so basically this way, we can ensure that there is one instance of uh, machine control system that we saved in our class. Okay, sure, we have one instance of it. How can we prevent more instance being created? Ideas? Wait, 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 wait. Without raising your hand, Jamar, that, that, that's unfair, uh, unfair game. So how can we make it? Sure. Yes, so how can we uh, not allow people to create uh, objects? Uh, yes, so in the constructor, may maybe, but then like, we don't, error, errors will ha happen during runtime. And we ideally want to allow our intern to not do that at all, to program not compiled he tries. Oh. Let, let's, let's try Shahida. Right, so we can make what eat, so. Shahida, what's eat? Uh, uh, so what, what we can make private? You say make it private, what eat? What variable? So make the variable private, it's already private. Constructor, here you go. And I heard Jamar that you said constructor, but not, but not everyone did. So we can make the constructor private. So see, actually, you, you again, you could have noticed it. You see it here, and see what I did here. I moved public uh, down. So the constructor is private. It means that people outside of the class cannot call it. So if people outside of the class cannot call the constructor, they cannot create the thing. So how can we give them the instance that we already have? Mm -hmm. So if they cannot create, uh, call the constructor, can, how can we give them the instance that we already have? Mm -hmm. Fake constructor. What's fake constructor, I think? Also known as a getter. Where is it? It's somewhere here. Uh, here you go, get instance. So we create a static method that's called get instance. That does very simple thing. If we don't have an instance, right? So we never, we, uh, it's the first time the get instance is called in the program, right? We create a new machine control system. And otherwise, we just return the instance. That's all. So since the constructor is private, that's the only place in the program where we can create the object. And it's only created the first time, right? Because by default, this instance variable, it's private. Oh, it's, it's sorry, yeah, it's obviously private, but it's also null pointer, right? So because it, it's not pointing to anything. So since it's by default null pointer, when we uh, call this method get instance for the first time, we get our, um, uh, we create our object and we return it, right? And so now we can see. So for instance, here in main, we now use this thing. So instead of just calling the constructor, we call this get instance method that gives us uh, the object, the pointer to the object. And in the logic area, we uh, also use the same. And so what if I am a dump intern that uh, doesn't know programming and try to do something like this? Something like this. Well, it will actually tell me, call in a private constructor, I cannot compile. So here you go. So the program will not even compile if I try to call a constructor. The same will happen if uh, 
if I do it uh, here, right? So I say uh, in main, if I say new machine control system, it also will, will tell me the same. Uh, cannot call a private constructor. So this way, the only object that we have, it's the one that created the first time. And everyone else, when they will be calling get, uh, get instance uh, method, like this, they will be getting the same project. No more uh, two sons, no more two, um, uh, two control systems, no more two level managers. I have a bonus example about Singleton where, where we look at one thing, but I, I think we'll return to it in the end of the class to refer to the memory. So questions about Singleton. So that's how Professor Taxatov, what Professor Taxatov called hello world of design patterns. And because the uh, motivation for its use is very simple. It's just that you, um, uh, you don't want more than one object of the class exists and you want to guarantee that it's always the case. Super easy motivation. Quite easy of implementation, right? So we create this static instance variable, right? And then we create this static uh, get instance method. And so we force all other classes that use our class to use that get instance variable to get our, um, our um, uh, object. Any questions? Great. So then we'll move to the next one. The next one, OP students will really need it in their uh, QT development. Everyone else will really need it in their, uh, in any development actually. Observer. Observer pattern is yes, is one of the uh, of the most most used because it's very um, uh, it's very um, versatile. So let's look at it. Right. So we have this code without an observer pattern. Again, that's a some snapshot. Let's say that it's a program for a What's your favorite newspaper? Hmm? New, York. New York Times, sure. This is, this is a part from New York. By the way, do you know that all outside students have free access to New York Times? If you didn't, didn't ask library how to access it. Anyway, uh, so let's imagine that this is New York Times app, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, a small, small part of it. So let's start from the, from the very bottom. Right, so from our main. So from here. So let's imagine someone has re wrote a read uh, article. What to do if your students play dot instead of studying? And that someone was this guy. Right, and uh, so he wrote that article, he sent it to proofreaders, right? He sent it to editors, and then he decided to publish. So let's see what happens when he so send to proofreader, send to editor, it's not important. What happens when he publishes? Well, he uh, needs to upload to the website. He needs to save the article to the database backup. And then he wants to do a very simple thing. All social media of New York Times need to make a post that like this article got released, right? So obviously New York Times doesn't do that because they have um, uh, dozens of articles released in a week, but some maybe smaller newspapers. They do a post about every article they publish on their website, right? So here you go. So we want to uh, send an email to all our subs email subscribers. We want to make a Twitter post, a Facebook post, an Instagram post, right? So, so, and for that, we have these different handlers, right? So, email handler, it's a class that figure out how to send emails, right? So, we can look at it here. So, it has a vector of people to email, and, uh, yeah, and it can send emails to people, right? So, then we have Twitter media handler uh, that uh, have some account name, some... Uh, API key, some other information, right? And then again, it uh, it can get notified, create a certain message, and post that message. Pretty much the same with Facebook handler, right? Also get notified, create a message, post the message. 
and Instagram handler. Right, so and every every time we create an article, we give it the, the those handlers that our main function knows about. So here we create all them, right? And uh, so and when the article is created, we give them all those handlers. So when it publishes, it can post them, right? So when the second article here is created, how to live if you failed a fails uh, is. Uh, uh, also, I uh, given those four um, handlers. So, what's the problem with all of this? With, with this, let's say. Uh, no, no, you already talked uh, a lot to me. I seem as well. I want some other voices. What's the problem with this? From the point of the design, it compiles. By the way, let me show you that it compiles. Uh -huh. Right, so here you go. It posted the, the message, it sent the email, everything works. So the, the, so the, uh, the problem works. What's the problem from the perspective of the design? Every time to pass the handlers. Right, so we have so many handlers, and we need to pass it to every single article. So you see at this uh, how, how ugly this looks, right? And what if we decide to remove a handler? What if we, I don't know, after Elon Musk bought Twitter, New York Times decided to uh, boycott Twitter, and it was to remove it. What does it mean? Uh, what, what do we need to do? What do we need to do, guys? Um, maybe it's inside of the class. Uh, maybe. No, no. So, so, we, so we decided that we will never use Twitter again, right? So what we need to do? Well, here in, we don't want to, uh, to publish to Twitter anymore. Right? Where, where do we do this? Right? So we don't want to publish to Twitter anymore. But then we, it means that we uh, don't need this Twitter media handler. And if we don't need it, we need to remove it from, from here, right? And if we need to remove, the, remove it from here, we need to remove it from here. And that means that we actually don't need to send it uh, in the first place. And like that to every single article. That's first problem. Second problem, what if we also decide to uh, notify people via pagers, right? Because, because we have some... Uh, Pensioners that are reading New York Times. So what does it mean? Uh, we will need to do. We will need to create a new class. Okay, sure. We need to, we need to do that anyway. But what else we will need to do? Yes, we need to change the constructor, change the article class, uh, and change the uh, the uh, and change the. Uh, the main method and so on and so on, right? So it will become a lot of things that if our program changes and the amount of our uh, uh, Of the handlers that we are notifying will grow So in this uh, case we can say that uh, It's often called that all those handlers who have been notifying about our email or about our article all those handlers Those are our subscribers so please don't confuse it with the subscribers from like social network or from email to something. It's subscriber class to our publisher class. What's our publisher class in this context? Uh, hmm? No. No. The name of the class. What's this? What's the name of the class that publishes information? What do I understand by by word publishers? Reveals basically the no, 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 not in English, like in, in programming. What's publishing? Uh, right, so we are telling uh, someone, so we are notifying all these classes that, we, that something has changed. So that's what's called publishing, right? So uh, here we have publish in sense of that we are publishing the article, but we also publishing updates to all these handlers so they can send the uh, the posts or emails or whatever, right? And all those handlers are subscribers of our class article. So we have publisher class article or subscriber class 
major Instagram media can, their Facebook media can, and so on and so on. Right? We can also say that uh, we have uh, observers and observee. Who is our observee? The, uh, the class that is being observed. Class. Hmm? Class. No, class. What, what classes do we have? Article, yes. Who said article? It says the same thing, but uh, louder. Great. So we have class art article. It's being observed by classes what? What are the names of those classes? What are the names of the classes that are observed in class article? The Twitter media handler, Facebook media handler, uh, an email handler, and so on and so on. So all those three classes are observers of our class article. Uh, in uh, Swing Computer, in all those GUI libraries that we were learning, we had class button that had a function on click. And, uh, and so on click, what did that, uh, that class do? It, it, it changed the, the background of, uh, of, uh, uh, of the canvas, it's uh, closing windows, it were uh, opening some windows, and so on and so on. So that means that as soon as some event is happening, it was telling the, class, uh, the classes who ob uh, are observing it uh, that, uh, that something has changed. So that's the, the motivation between the uh, problem here, right? So we have some event that might happen. So in case of our uh, new, new thing, what's the event that might happen? Yeah, so a new article getting published, right? So, and in case of that event, we need to tell all the, um, uh, all the people who are interested, all the classes who are interested, same the interesting and right? Uh, that we are, um, that the update has happened. So in case we publish the email, uh, we publish the article, we need to tell all the handlers that they need to post something, right? So that's the idea. So we have a class article that uh, when, it's getting when, it's, uh, when the article is getting published, it needs to tell all the handlers that they need to do a post, right? And in, in current situation, it's very non-flexible because we have all those handlers hard-coded. All these handlers hard-coded uh, and, and so on and so on. Right, so it's, it's very messy. So how can we solve this? How can we make that, like, if I decide to, uh, if they decide to do a TikTok post every time an article is released, they can just add a handler in one place and that's all. Yes, they do. To call what? To follow, to send to every function. Right, so we can create a class that, that, that does that. So, but again, then all of this logic that we have in here, it will just move to that class. It will still be messy just in another class. So then we'll have, so if we have 10 articles, you'll have 10 media handlers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Right. So we can use templates, or people who know about that, we can use polymorphism uh, to make all those uh, handlers of one class effectively, right? And then we, we can use that. So uh, the idea is that we want to create a vector of people who we want to notify, a vector of classes that we want to notify, and then just notify all of them. So here is one way how can we do this, uh, how we can do this. Let me switch to, uh, to this code, right? Oh, no, not this, to this one. Uh, so it's exactly the same code, right? So, so all those media handlers. But here we, we want to do the, the following thing. We want to create a list of all people who are subscribed to us, and then just notify them. So we want to have a very clean loop like this. So again, in this sense, in this sense subscribers are not 
like people who subscribe to Twitter or Facebook. In this sense, subscribers are classes who are interested in what's happening in Arctic Oceans, right? So, for instance, in, uh, in uh, GUI example, subscribers of class button is class canvas, right? Because when button is getting pressed, canvas is getting notified that it needs to change color. In case of this, the uh, subscribers to class articles are all those handlers that need to, to do a post or send an email, right? So please don't confuse uh, the, 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 like Twitter subscribers and class subscribers in this situation. So, so we want to do something very, very simple. We want to notify all our subscriber classes like this in a simple for loop. Well, so I, myself, when I was using that for my job, I was using polymorphism. But some people here don't know polymorphism. So instead, I will show you an, an, a nice way how you can do this. So what you can do, you can, you can create this. So people who are from OOP, remember your lecture you had yesterday? People are, who are from sophomore and up, Try to, uh, to figure out what the hell is happening here. What the hell is happening here? So, what are we having in the end of the day? So, this media publishing function list, what type does it have? No, it's not a function. Vector of functions. So we have vector of functions. Those functions should return nothing. They should return void, and should, they should take two strings as an argument. So we are returning. Uh, we have a vector of functions that uh, return nothing and take two strings. And this vector consists of how many elements? Of three elements. So what kind of elements there? Um, functions. Hmm? Three functions. Yes. Yeah, so three functions. Which functions? Twitter handler notify, Facebook notify, Instagram notify, right? So uh, those are, so this thing, how is it called? Like this uh, language element, lambda. It's a lambda expression. Right? Uh, you, you guys in OP were talking about that uh, on, on the lecture yesterday. At least that's what Professor Taxita told me. So, uh, everyone else, we have talked about that in our previous group session, right? About one about functional analysis. Yeah. So, what the hell is happening here? What, what this lambda is telling us? Maybe, maybe it's telling us that we should stop programming and just do drugs instead because <laughs> drugs are less than fitting this. But if we are, don't want to do drugs, what's, what's up? Sure. Uh, are you raising your hand? No. No. But I'm sure, sure. Jonah. Can you speak up, please? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Each handles, each handles different social networks, exactly, right? So basically we are saying that we have this Instagram media handler and we want to take it with ourselves inside of this, uh, inside of this array, right? So we are, we are creating a copy of it for us to, to use here inside. And then we are saying that our function will accept two things, title and author. Right, just to give it to the corresponding uh, function of uh, of the of the handler, right? So our function of uh, media handler is taking get notified about new article function that needs to take two strings, right? And so we are creating a uh, let's say a wrapper around our uh, around our get notified about new article function that we can put in an array. So the cool things about uh, lambda functions is that you can put them in an array, 
right? So basically what we are saying, we are getting all those functions, Instagram notify, Facebook notify, and what's the last one? Twitter notify. We are putting them in the array. And then what do we do with that array? What do we do with that array? We pass it to the article, right? So we have this method. Uh, our article has this method that accepts the array of this type and uh, and adds all element from it, right? And then so uh, and now inside of this uh, so this array, right? So again, it's a vector of functions that return nothing and take two strings. So we have this vector, and then uh, and then uh, we add elements to that vector. And then when it's time to publish, we just call this notify subscribers method that very cleanly does it in a, in a one for loop. So if I decide, for instance, to add, so as you can see here, I only have media handlers. What if I want to add email handler? Well, then it's super easy. I add it here in one place, right? I say that I want to take an e email handler. Uh, and then again, the function will still take only uh, two strings. Okay. Uh, actually, you know what? Why am I typing? Typing is so 2010. Let me copy it. So here, instead of Instagram media handler, I'm having my email handler. And here, I also just have my email handler, but the name of the, uh, of the method is different. It's not get notified about new article, it's uh, send email. Here you go, okay. Send email. Uh, does it not need, oh, it, it, it just message. So, so, so it should be author, like this. Here you go. So as you can see, this title sync is not even used, but that's fine. So we needed to have it here, so it follows this pattern, that it accepts two strings. So even though we are not using it, we still have it. So to not confuse, confuse uh, other people, I can put it like this. That's the thing that is very loved in Python, specifically. Create a variable with the name underscore, judge, uh, and that means that we don't care about this variable. It's just a variable, so uh, we follow the pattern that we need. So here you go. Now I added another uh, another handler, and I don't need to change anything in article because it just gets this uh, this array that it's um, uh, the, the, that it goes through with a fork, and that's all. If they, I, I decide to add TikTok, I just add it in class main, and that's also all. So, that's a pattern that's called Observer. So, Professor Taxitov is again mentioned it in OP, so that's for OP students. For everyone else, uh, Observer is one of the two patterns that I actually used in my, in my uh, development. Because it's super right. useful to, to tell things. So, again, in all GUI programs, you need to somehow tell your um, your your GUI about uh, events that happen in your logic. So if you're having troubles with that in Una, well, one of the solutions was to use Observer pattern, right? So your uh, Una doesn't even uh, recall flashbacks in people. Wow. Are, are you are you restoring from the trauma that Una, Una did to all of you? So, so, so you don't forget all the things that Una taught you. You know, you don't appreciate Una enough. Like, like pain, uh, yes. I mean, I mean, uh, learning through pain exactly. That's literally the name of my first data structure semester. Anyway, uh, so uh, in Una, when you want to notify your uh, implementation from your logic, you can use Observer pattern. In uh, uh, Qt, when you want to notify your canvas from your buttons, you use Observer pattern. And here, when you want to notify real people about real article, you use Observer pattern. 
So we actually exactly out of time. That's a pity because I have a third pattern, but oh well, I'm, I will not be extending it. So we only subscribe here for one hour, for, now, for one hour. We discuss everything we want. So a couple of last remarks. So those patterns are like, you know, it's uh, like in mass when you are all doing induction. Were you all guys doing induction? Yep. Does it also in call PTSD? Uh, yeah, kinda. So with induction, remember, it was all the tricks that you learned, and if you learn, uh, but learning the tricks is not enough. You need to like you know understand them. So the same as with induction, there are many different things that you needed to, to know. Right? You know, adding can subtract in the same number, right? Uh, uh, extracting a number from 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 something like that. But after you learn all of that, it's so much easier to solve them. The same with design patterns. We are not hoping with, with this session that like you listened about observer and singleton for uh, one hour and then you will come out and start using observer in every of your program, right? So we hope that uh, that gives you the, the understanding that some problems, if you encounter, so that's if there is one thing that you can take out from this class, take out this thing. If there is one problem in your development when you cannot understand how your classes should interact, how you, how one, how like, you have some design problem, right? So we were discussing all the design, not for nothing. So you cannot figure out how to structure as your program. Things that maybe someone else with much more experience than you already thought about it and look up what, what they did and that, uh, that, that will help you. So there are two things, right? One class that, um, uh, one, one class that uh, can exist in only one object, and the second class that needs to tell many, many different people about what's happening in here. And these are the two solutions to it. So next week, probably, we are going to have more patterns, but that's not going to be me, it's going to be someone else. So uh, OP students will get the notifications during the lecture, and everyone else, well, probably through the email. We'll see it organized. Anyway, thank you all for coming. Can you say on the email if they want those points, they should put their name on the Oh, yeah. So, uh, so uh, let me finish the recording. So for that, I'll say, so every, all people in the recording, let me even switch. You know, like, like this. Haha. <laughs> Here you go. All, all people, people in the recording, that's all for you. you. Thank, thank you all for coming. coming. I'll uh, for, for coming, coming electronically, I guess. So, so hopefully, hopefully you will come, come to the next, next lecture in person. person. So, so I'll, I'll stop, stop recording. recording.